Um, so I'd like to introduce Catherine. Catherine's going to do our first talk. So thank you very much, focusing on clinical transformation um, around the work that she's done in the dietetics team at Hull. So thank you, Catherine. Yeah, so thanks very much for inviting me. The I've spoken a couple of times about PKB for different forums. Uh, I am a bit of an enthusiastic speaker, so I'll try and rein myself in. And I've got my eye on the clock for 12 for 12 p.m. So um, if anybody wants to contact me outside of this session, I have put my Twitter handle on there and my email address. People are welcome to contact me. And I'm just going to do a brief talk about how we're using patient knows best within kidney dietetics. At the end, I can talk a little bit about oh, my internet, internet connection is unstable, sorry. Um, at the end, I can talk a little bit about plans for the rest of our dietetics department, if, if it's of interest. Uh, I realise I am from Hull and I do have a bit of a funny accent, so I'll try my best. So I hope you can all understand me all all right. <laughs> uh, we're quite unique. So next slide, please. So why did we choose to use patients know best? Various reasons, really. One of them being that um, the pandemic really did accelerate all decisions around using patient knows best. But within kidney care, and as Mo already alluded to in his welcome, the um, self-empowerment, patient self-monitoring, um, it's very fundamental to living well with kidney disease. And last year's um, awareness campaign from Well Kidney Day was about living well with kidney disease and embracing different technologies for patients to be able to look after themselves. For some time, we have had a patient portal where patients can access the blood results. And it has had several functions called renal patient view. Um, that eventually developed into something called patient view because it was used in more than just renal care. And we did write a paper on it a little while ago which I've referenced there, which suggested that in better use of the different functions may enable better patient care. And what PKB could do was tick a lot of them extra functions that we wanted to use. There is also the NHS England Outpatient Transformation Programme that does put an emphasis on patient-initiated follow-up, and it does give the emphasis on giving patients greater control of their hospital follow-up care. So everything links in together really nicely. It's, um, it's it's also been handy for us, I suppose, as well, to have a patient cohort that has, that has been used in some capacity to having some sort of digital um, portal that they could look at that was in relation to their own care. So we were on a starting, a good starting block because we had a good patient cohort to start with as well. So we have been blessed in that it's maybe been a bit easier for us than it has been elsewhere. Just next slide, please. Like Chris Whitty. We're also a little team of pioneers. So, you know, I'm, I'm quite blessed in that I've got a really lovely team of clinicians. And there's Anne Marie on the call, I believe, um, success manager for the north of the UK. And there's Jenny Barker, who is was leading the project within the whole university teaching hospitals. Um, so big shout out to both of them because none of this would have happened without their full support and for them supporting me through it. And um, they, they came they came to me with the suggestion that this is something we could use and I just leapt onto it really. So between the three of us, the three amigos, we had to think about what PKB could do for us as clinicians, what it could do for our service, as well as what it can do for the patient. So it's it is a patient held health record um but to help with change um it's, it's sometimes easier for clinicians to understand as well how it's going to help them so we had to look at how we're going to develop our own page so Anne-Marie very kindly gave me a demonstration um taught taught through all the different functions that we could use couldn't use and left it to us to to decide what it is what it was that we wanted to get out of it so we initially developed um, a page that had a library and there's a little snippet there of what's in our library. Um, it's got links to different YouTube videos about how to cook low potassium meals. 
links to different cookbooks which are freely available on the internet. They're just internet links. There's all our dietetic information resources, resources that we produce within the department, so our patient information leaflets, links to different charities, links to other um, portals like the uh, Humber Health app. So if patients want to use different app- apps on their phone for managing their health, it does link into that as well. Um, so we looked at our library. We looked at a welcome page. We looked at different plans that we could use. And we looked at different um, consultations that we could use. And Anne-Marie very kindly put up with me to and from, to and from, until everything was perfect. So I would say, well, this is in my head, I want this to this page to look like that. Um, and I had very much set in my head what I wanted it to look like. And then Anne-Marie would try and bring my vision to life. And I'd be like, well, you did quite well there, Anne-Marie, but actually this word needs to change, that needs to change. And so between us, a lot to and from, we got it perfect. And bless Anne-Marie, because she never got fed up with me once. <laughs> but once it was all right, everything that we wanted it to do, we then decided it was going to go live. Next page, please. Uh, I might give away my age a little bit on the next slide. No, it's the one after. This is just an example of one of the um, one of the plans that we put on. So, as dietitians, we're very um, very invested in really in what somebody's bowel motions look like. It's, it's of great interest to me, not to everybody, um, but it can be a significant challenge for people that are on peritoneal dialysis, and it can lead to treatment failure. So, one of the really um, brilliant for everybody for me is super interesting um, but to save some of the embarrassment for some patients who might not want to talk to me face to face about the bowel motions we can send this in advance so in advance of an appointment I can send. if somebody's not on patient knows best um, I do show them this in the clinic and say is this something you're interested in I do register people onto PKB whilst they're with me in clinic um, this was um, what Jenny produced for me in the project team t- just to f- lay out how our process was going to work around PKB. So it, w- it was all the administration, like who, who was going to register the patients, how were we going to get patients on. Um, so this, this was all done as part of the project before Go Live. If you want to go to the next slide. Um, this maybe gives away my age. I don't know if anybody recognises it. <laughs> uh, yes. So Saturday morning going live. So once everything was right, um, I will, we're happy with what the plans looked like, happy with what the light was in the library, happy with our consultations, happy with the process of how we were going to use it, how our admin team would be involved, who was going to curate the page. When all those boxes were ticked, we went live. So next slide, please. As part of going live, we also created some smart goals. So great that we're going live. We had a pilot of patients that were interested, a little cohort, uh, maybe a dozen or so. Um, We set these smart goals. I know my internet might have dropped out again there. So the smart goals were what we, how we were going to measure that PKB was helpful for us. So this is what we started off with right at the beginning. So we had quite a few um, big ideas of how we thought PKB would help us. Next slide, please. So what happened then? So we kept adding interested patients um, through the pilot phase. So when somebody was in clinic with me, even though we're in the pilot, I would show them PKB and say, is this something of interest to you? And they would give me their email address there and then and I would register them in. So we kept adding interested people. So our cohort of maybe starting about with a dozen ended up to be a couple of dozen by the end of it. And after six six months, we realized it was working well for us. So we decided to mail shop all the dialysis patients. It was Jenny's team again that helped out here. They did all the information governance behind it. Um, We agreed a letter to send out. And so far, 132 of the patients we've contacted have registered out of about 400. 
We've been adding more resources as well to our library. So there's more cookbooks and web links. And what we're finding is the most popular item within our PKB page is the message function. So you, they've got a clinician at the end of the line. So that's what my little pitch is about. Instead of somebody leaving a message, waiting for it to be picked up, um, we're, we're instantly being able to contact patients anytime, anytime that we like, which, is, which has been great. And the patients have really taken that on board. Next slide, please. So just a quick overview, because the my message function has been our most popular, this is what I've included in. So by having less telephone messages and less having to call back, um, patients can put what their problem is straight off into a message. And so our messages, as you can see over time, started off at nearly about 100 every month to about half that now, we're about 45 a month. So the amount of time clinicians are having to waste following up, trying to call back is um, vastly decreased. So, and I just wanted to put that in there and that one of the main major benefits for us is that we're able to use our clinical time more effectively. We're able to respond to patients more quickly. Um, patients are getting a better service at the end of the day. Can we have the next slide, please? I'm nearly at the end. So this is, this is my last slide. So what's next? So we've already added in an additional consultation to our PKB page. Um, it was around a product that we've been using and we wanted to, to um, ask patients for their individual views on this product and it was part of their patient care. So it was included onto PKB. We have started using PKB or we're going to start next month to um, encourage patients to self-screen for undernutrition. And that's actually going to be a patient, um, a dissertation project for an undergraduate student at Leeds. Um, we're adding more and more patients every day. Um, we're, we've not limited it to just dialysis. We're now adding pre-dialysis, general nephrology, kidney transplantation. Um, and the more that more functions that we can do around kidney care, the more that we're going to use this. So at the moment, patients aren't seeing their blood results on PKB because they get that in patient view. But when it's all together and they can look at it in one place, um, I think we'll get more take up. Uh, we're a bit more proactive in... We need, we need to be more proactive in sending out consultations and plans before a dietetic appointment. So there's still a little bit of work for us to embed how we use PKB in our day-to-day -day work, um, but it is all there for us to be able to do. It just needs the interested clinicians to, to do it. Um, and we are looking at how we can use PKB in other dietetics teams across, across the department. So paediatrics is one that's interested, oncology services, upper GI, um, and our gastro services so maybe doing something doing something there so we've got quite a big future I think for ourselves and PKB and I think that is me I'm really sorry about the internet connection it's rubbish here in Hull today we've, we've got most of what you've said Catherine don't <laughs> worry I think I think there's probably about five ten percent but we we caught up so don't worry I'm sure I'm sure everyone's been able to follow anyway so thank you very much for that um we have had one question come in. I'd encourage if anyone does have any more questions, if you can pop them in the chat and we'll ask them now. Um, but the, the initial question we've had come in is, does anyone triage these messages from the patients to find if they need responding to straight away or can wait? So how, how do you manage that, that triage process? So if a patient um, wants to send a message, they can, send, they can choose the clinician that they want to send the message to or it comes to all of us as a team. And we get um, an alert in our NHS email to say, you have a message on PKB. I can then log into PKB and see who the message is from, what the message said. Um, and then we triage then who's going to deal with it from our, from our end. I can divert messages to other people if I want to. Um, so there's a whole system around the message function. So every time a message comes to me, it does, it does come in straight into my email inbox. And because I'm on my email all day, every day, um, I pick up the messages really quickly rather than having to dial into a voicemail, uh, especially if I'm off site. So I can, I can deal with messages instantaneously if I want. Great. Thank you. Um, a second question that we've had come in is that someone's interested in your plan to roll out to children and young people. Um, do you foresee any challenges to how, how you're going to expand to this group? Yes, I think because the people that are going to have to register are parents. So um, at the moment, the talk was around maybe using it in um, 
paediatric diabetes was where the conversation was started because they do use a diabetes app within paediatric diabetes, which patients use. But unfortunately, we can't add on our trust information that we use with patients. Um, so, yeah, there will be some significant challenges and we do have to think around safeguarding with children. Um, to be fair, children is probably going to be the one that we do last because I think that's going to be more of a challenge. It's been a lot easier with adults. Great, thank you. Um, we've had quite a lot of questions coming now, so I'll just keep flying through them, but please please keep popping them in if anyone's got any follow-ups. Um, have the patients who have signed up found the app easy to navigate with minimal support from staff to use it? Yes, I've only had questions from one or two about um, what they're doing. And um, if I'm on a dialysis unit, I'll say, well, we'll whip your phone out, let's have a look, let's log in, and we, we, do, it, we do it together. Because I'm often registering patients in clinic, I'm showing them the site and talking them through it when I register them. Um, so I'll say, well, I want you to look at the library and this is how you access it. I'm on PKB as a patient myself. So I sometimes log up my own record and say to people, this is how I click in. I can use the sandbox. I don't have to use my own record at all, but it's, it's sometimes just a little bit easier. I also use PKB as a relative. So I'm invited to some, one of my family members' PKB page, so I can also sometimes explain to patients about how to use that function. Um, I suppose, I suppose um, I've got the upper hand there, and because I because I'm using it as a patient, I may be a little bit more familiar with it than those clinicians that aren't aren't so much. I would just really recommend if it's something you want to go with, and you have a sandbox set up, which is your pretend page really make use of pretending to play you know playing with it because it will give you that better understanding of how you can explain it to your patients I think just to add to that Catherine it's really interesting that um obviously you're talking about your experience of using it as a patient yourself yeah. that this is something that we do encourage in most of our deployments uh, for organizations to register their staff not as staff but actually with the patient record as well because we think it gives you a different a different insight so if anyone wants to know more about that we can we can pick that up with your success team leads afterwards but I think Catherine's experience goes to show how how valuable that that insight can be not just from a professional point of view um we've got five minutes and we've still got a few more questions coming in so I will fly through these as quickly as we can um just on the messaging again do you offer other methods for patients to contact the clinical team or is it only PKB now no, there's the full range of, of messaging. So they can use PKB. They can still pick up the phone. They can email us. We have um, a central email address. Um, still, they can still write in by post if they want to. So all methods of communication are still open. Uh, we have found it particularly helpful for patients that have communication difficulties. Like I have a head and neck cancer patient who can't speak. Um, he tends to use the PKB function quite a lot. Great. Thank you. Um, there was an upward trend in the graph that you showed between May and July of this year. Was there a simple reason for this, do you know? Yeah, lack of staff. <laughs> uh, so we did have a few more messages flying in because um, we didn't have some members of staff about uh, around at the units because we do get, um, we, we travel to satellite dialysis units. And so when we're there, we do get cornered quite a lot. Um, but because we hadn't been, we did have a bit of a uptake in messages, but our staffing's back to as usual now. So if I'm doing comparisons, I would compare September this year with September last year because it's exactly the same staffing and scenario with our workforce and our service delivery. Great. Thank you. Um, with the messaging, is there a documented process that you can share? Do you have you know rules around how you monitor the email and what you advise to patients? Um, I'm not sure that we have anything particularly written down as a like an operating procedure. We just have it as a department agreement of um, the message comes in, it gets added. We have an electronic message book um, because we are a remote team. Um, so if I can't action that message, I can redirect it to a to um, a different staff member, or I just write into the our electronic message book in the department saying there's a message on PKB and someone pick it up. Um, we can monitor how quickly we respond to messages. Uh, that's part of the um, metrics that we can look at. So if I, if, as a manager, I can see that our response rates dropped to three days instead of 24 hours, I can, well, what's happening here? I don't think I have anything particularly in writing. 
Okay, no problem. Thank you. Um, I think we've got time for a couple more before we go to the next speaker. So do you have a plan for how you'll transition children um, to self-owned adult records? My quick answer is no. I don't have any plan. <laughs> We're still blue sky thinking on this one, I think. We can, um, we can work we can work with you on that i'm sure yeah. we've got some ideas so and we'll, my, we'll the, my colleagues in the pediatrics department are probably the best ones to answer that one really perfect sorry no 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 problem thank you thank you very much um let's see i think there's a couple more that we might be able to squeeze in what do you feel was the most difficult part of your transition from pre-pkb to having it integrated into your workplace and how did you overcome that um, I think the biggest challenge for us really was um, because there is another portal that patients are used to. I think this is our biggest barrier still. Um, as a team, we're, we were heading down the digital route already, moving on to electronic records, video clinics. Um, we're quite digitally advanced like that, I suppose, compared to some other teams. But our biggest challenge is... Um, was the other with the other portal that patients can use trying to get them to move over because as clinicians as well we're, we're very used to saying no oh, have you registered with patient view and handing out that, that form so I think that was the biggest shift for us is that um that that was the biggest change I don't know if I've answered that quite but yeah that's our biggest challenge it continues to be our biggest challenge Hope, hopefully because that obviously patient view is going to be um uh at some point is going to be shelved, isn't it? So hopefully yeah. that will help when it makes it a clearer cut distinction for you. But yeah. I think it just goes to show that having multiple multiple systems can can cause more confusion, can't it? It so, can, yeah. Brilliant. Well, um, we've got a couple of questions that we've not been able to cover, but we will share these with Catherine after. And if she's got time, um, we, we'll, we'll get some answers over to people that ask them. Um, Catherine, thank you so much. That was really interesting. And thank you for persevering. I think, <laughs> Sorry. Still all took, I think we still all took so much away from it. So we really appreciate, really appreciate you talking through the work that you've done and, and the what's next. I'm sure everyone will be really keen to hear how you get on with that.